I am now joined by a very special guest. It is uh, Eric Hall, and we're going to be talking about his book, Eric Hall, Monster. Did I say that right? Yes, Bubba. I did? Yes, Did Bubba. I get enough gravel in the voice? Yes, Bubba, you're sensational. That's good. So, I'm a little bit intimidated by you, I have to say, because oh, I've, I've read all about your life now. I feel like I know you. You've done everything from promoting, being an agent, a football agent, yes. various jobs. I mean, like, which one was your favourite job out of all of them, do you think? I suppose, if I'm monster, monster honest, which is hard for me as a Jewish agent to be monster, monster honest, I do miss the record business, because that's my first kind of proper job yeah. I get paid for. 15 years old, I leave school, and 15 years old, and you used to do that in those days, and I got a job in a place called Denmark Street, London, Tim Pan Alley, known as Tim Pan Alley. My first ever job, tea boy, literally, tea boy, because we made the tea, and we went out to, to the cafe with the tea urn, like the old Eric Monkham and Ernie Wise joke, you know, have some tea urn, and a tea urn to get tea and sandwiches and the bosses. I was on, and the other office boy, was well, a boy called, eight, same age as me, two, four, five, six months old, I'm going to my yeah. age now, was a guy called Reg Dwight. Yes, me and Reg started together, yeah. who then became a few years later Elton John. And over the road in Denmark Street was a guy called, who worked for, I think, Southern Music yeah. in Tim Benali, was David Jones, who became David Bowie. Wow. And up the road a little bit, I forget, at, at, uh, maybe, I don't know what the publishers was, was a little kid, snotty little kid from the East End called Stevie Marriott. Who formed the small faces? So when you were younger, you obviously were exposed to a lot of um, celebrities. Smaller, but then your life that. actually got even more interesting because obviously you became a promoter and uh, yourself. Well, no, I was always worked for people, always yeah. up to a point. I went to Granada TV one night to do a t in Manchester to do a little TV show about Mark Boland. He'd been dead about a year, died a year, and Muriel Young, who was head of Granada TV, children's shows, and Muriel wanted some little shtick about Mark Boland and didn't tell a year. So I went on the train from Euston, London to Manchester, done the show, come back that night, Manchester, London. Instead of going home, I felt a little bit noshy and wanted a little bit to drink and a little sandwich. A guy come up to me, big, black, good-looking kid, man. Excuse me, he says, I know you, I know you. I said, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so, but you might do, I don't know. And no, I do, I know you, I know you. I said, well, I don't know if you know me. If you do, right, fine. I know, I'm just probably effing man. And this little stocky guy came up to him and said, Garth, leave him alone, he don't know you. It's not driving him mad. Sorry, mate, to me, about my pal. That's all right, don't worry. That's all right. And 10 minutes later, he comes back to me, this guy, same big black mm -hmm. guy. I know where I know you. Do you go to a club called Mugbridge in German Street? I said, yeah. I've seen you there, and I went, well, I will name drop, so I'm a name dropper. I've seen you there with Ross Stewart and Elton John, and da da dum and do da do and da da dee and do da dun and da da dum You know, so he didn't really know me, but he seen me at these, sitting on a table in this club, Monkbridge, a supper club, yeah. with all these, you know, faces. So he kind of, you know, put two and two together and made six instead of four, but he knew me because he didn't know me, but he'd seen me. So he worked out, yes, yes, ah, that's where I know you from. And then finish up, he introduced himself. And then the big guy said, I told you to leave him alone. I said, no, it's all right, we've we sorted it out now. What's your name, by the way? Steve, Steve Perriman. Hello, Steve, nice to meet you. What Eric Hall. What did you do, Steve? So I'm, I'm a footballer, I play for Spurs. I'm a, I said, what did you do, really? What, you're famous? I had no idea. My family is Spurs supporters, being North mm -hmm. Londoners, EastEnders. He said, well, um, and, and then the other little good-looking kid again said, he said, uh, uh, he said, back your face, he said, Captain, you know, Captain. What do you mean, you're Captain? Who are you? I'm Chris Hewton. That's Garth Crooks who's been driving you mad all night. And then we got chatting, we then sat down like a little cubicle shtick, had some more champagne and chat. I don't drink, but love a glass. And we got chatting, and Steve Perriman said to me, who was then the captain of Spurs, which I didn't know, you ever thought about being an agent in football, Eric? I said, you're mad. I said, I can't be an agent in football. He said, I'm Jewish. He said, what do you mean, what's they got to do with it? I said, well, you do free kicks, you should charge for them. You don't understand that joke, do you? She didn't laugh. Free kicks, then she was charged for them. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and anyway, cut a very long story short. I said to him, OK, I'll do it, I'll do it. We'll have a go. You don't have to know about football. Keith Birkinshaw was then the manager of Spurs. Keith Birkinshaw, though, they don't know about football. Just get us like endorsements and schmaltzments and this and that and that, TV, whatever. I said, OK, we'll have a trial. We'll shake hands on it, give it six months, no contract, and see how it goes. Well, that was very long many, many years ago, and mm -hmm. I'm still Steve Perriman's agent now with no contract. And that's how you got into well, football. Well, you've got no work, but I've got no contract. And that's how you got into football. 
and that's where I got into football. And then from Steve, he became a great passport for me in football. Can I, can I just stop no, no, you there? No, no, we've got to go to the break. <laughs> no, oh, all right, all right. I'll see you after the break. There's much more to hear from Eric Cole after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hi, and I'm still joined by Eric Hall, and we were just in the middle of talking about how you got into the football industry. I forget now the story, because I, I was so interested in the commercials. Give me another question, Bob. <laughs> so obviously you got into football, and you weren't expecting that, but going back to the showbiz side of things, that was where, you know, a lot of people know about your biggest achievement, which was uh, Freddie Mercury. My proudest record I promoted, plugged, was Bowman and Rhapsody, quite yet. Because you had well, to go it, to it, huge lengths, didn't you, to get because that Because I on. didn't believe when Freddie Mercury first played it in my office at EMI Manchester Square London, it was that eight minutes long. I said, Freddie, bubbler, bubbler, there is no way we're going to get this played. Because in those days, maybe still in these days, they had a playlist, Radio 1. Yeah. And to get the playlist, and they had about 30 records on the playlist. They have all the records I played all during Monday to Friday. And, to, and they only had like three or four new releases a week got on that playlist. So what I did was, I went to a lady called Doreen Davis, who was the head of the playlist then, Radio mm -hmm. 1 playlist. The chairman, that a chairman. A bit like Paul Chaplin, who's your chairman here. That a chairman there. And I went to see the Paul Chaplin of BBC, and I said, Doreen, what did you think of this? And she listened to it, and suddenly she's looking at what? She's saying, is it over here, Eric? She's not another six minutes yet, blah, blah, blah. And we went on and went on. She said, I see what you're worried about. So I went to see if I was worried about the record. She loved Queen, the band. You know, she, I love her, but I tell you, but we can't put it on the playlist. The only way you're going, to, you're going to get this on the playlist, it was six minutes then, is that somebody makes a record of the week mm -hmm. or something. But we can't put it on the playlist because we get maybe two, two and a half records on, you know. Fine. I walked back to my office from Manchester Square, to Manchester Square from Broadcasting Health, Ecton House actually, next door Broadcasting Health, get to my office. My secretary, Louise, said to me, Eric Dorian Davis on the phone. Oh, bloody hell. She's changed her mind. The stuff has happened here. Doreen, yes, Bobola. Listen, as you left, Noel Lemons came in. Really? I thought, wait for it. Doreen Noel said to her, no, don't play that. It's too long. She said, I played in the record. Oh, God, God. Uh, yeah? Well, she said, well, when it does get released, Noel said it'd be his record of the week. Which meant, I thought, oh, thank God, <laughs> is that it meant that that record that played every day on his show. And all the other, sh what they call strip shows, for some reason they call them strip shows, Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. had to play the other presenters' record of the week. Yeah. So that meant the first week, I'd have at least 10, 12, 15 plays on Radio 1. Monster, monster. And Freddie Mercury um, was very fond of you as well. Yes. Um, you t there's, a, there's a story in there about... Uh, well, I'll tell it quickly, I'll tell it quickly. I don't run out of time, but I will run out of time. Is that, let me mention the book yet, is that... Uh, he, yeah, he, he fancied me, to be fair, well, you know, wouldn't believe this. And that's right, you would believe it now, because they're making a movie you of Freddie... You had beautiful looks of hair. I'm trying to get my story in, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they're making a movie of Freddie Mercury's life called Freddie. Yes. Freddie. Called Freddie, of course. Which, as far as I know, Sasha Baron Cohen, Ali G's playing Freddie. Mm, that be interesting. Uh, 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 Katy Perry's playing Freddie's lady, Mary yeah. Austin. And this one's playing this one and that one. But the very good looking, I think, American actor, yeah. and a British actor, I think, is called Ben Chaplin. Very tall, good looking boy. He's playing me in the movie. Ooh. Playing Eric Hall. Are so you I'll curious be, about that? No, let him do it, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm not curious. I know about it. I'm not curious. I know Freddie Mercury came to my room one night. Freddie was in Luxembourg promoting yeah. Bowman Rhapsody. And um, he came up to my room, so uh, Holiday Inn, said, and, and bedroom. And at two o'clock in the morning, I opened the door and said, what do you want? Oh, bubbler, bubbler. Ah, uh, he called me bubbler. He could say, he's like you, he's a babaloo, babaloo. He's an Indian, like you, Indian. And she's a three of them. Wait, boy, he called me babaloo. Did he? I swear on my life. It must be an Indian thing. Indian thing, stick, yeah. bubbler, babaloo, babaloo. <laughs> I, I just made that up. <laughs> babaloo, babaloo. And he come to me and he said, Eric, can I get into Babaloo? I said, you've got no chance, bubbler. <laughs> Oh, well, well, can I hold your hand? He's very appreciative of Bohemian yes, Rhapsody, no, he, obviously. Yes, he didn't put too much, probably. I have heard of getting a, a, a gold disc, but that was ridiculous. So he said, he said well, can I just sit in your, in your room by your bedside and hold your hand? I said, yes. Oh, isn't hand. that nice? And he did. <laughs> and then a few whatever later, he comes off the EMI and back in London, and he played me his new record called Killer Queen. He put it, I put it on the old Ewan machine, you stuck the stick on and put it on the, uh, push the button, and he's Killer Queen, you're mad. What do you think? I said, it's going to be a monster here. I love it. 
Yeah, but you've not listened to the words. I am bubble. I love it. No bubble. You ain't listening to the words. I'm, I made that up. I said no bubble. Actually, he did say bubble last week. <laughs> I said he said no. Listen to the words. He keeps Murray Shandon in his fancy cabinet, mm -hmm. hair like Mary Antoinette, and perfume that does da, da, smell like certain perfume. So I used to put loads of, you know, Yves Saint Laurent on and Miss Dior and whatever, everything, you know, Cartier, Schmartier, covered smell. You smell me two miles up the road, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. And in my cabinet, EMI, I have champagne in. All that champagne from my guest to mm -hmm. give her a drink. And beers and, you know, soft drinks too. And I, in those days, I am a poem, which if you do still get a copy of my book, which is going to be re sort of published soon with a uh, picture and new stories, is, um, you know, hair like Mary Antoinette. So get to the point of the story, Bubbler. He said, no, no, it's about you. I said, well, please me kill a queen, but about me. Because the lyric that I realised, the lyric was about me. It was all about Eric Hall. And then the reason was the killer queen, that he fancied me, he couldn't have me. And he said, I'm the queen, I can't have you, and you're killing me. You're just full of stories, and you know we're out of time nearly. I know, but We could go on forever. Yes. But uh, if you want to know more about Eric Hall, uh, you can read his book, uh, Monster. Yeah.